Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. John McLean, and this will be uh, short answers about tough questions, number three. And the third one today I want to deal with is, uh, why do you, God, cause disobedient Christians to die rather than repent? Uh, certainly it seems that God could in his sovereign omnipotence and everything, uh, cause uh, a Christian to repent, change their mind, change their behavior, rather than causing them to die. And yet uh, we have uh, several examples in the Bible of God uh, judging Christians to death. In Acts chapter 5, we have this example of Ananias and Sapphira, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. If you want to, you can pause it and read it or open up your own Bible, but you probably know the story of how Ananias and Sapphira, they conspired to lie about property that they had sold, and it says uh, Peter confronts them and says, you know, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? While it remained unsold, did it remain your own? Uh, God does not force anybody to give. He wants us to give. He wants us to be free from the love of money. But we're not forced to give or the amount that we're to give. Tithing, particularly in the New Testament, is not a biblical principle. And I have a post on that on my website. But he dies. And then a little while later, his wife comes in and she conspires with the same lie. And Peter says to her, why is it you have agreed together to put the spirit of the Lord to the, to the test? And uh, she had not only, it says they had not only lied to God, but paralleling a lie to the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord is a lie to God, uh, emphasizing that the Holy Spirit is God also. But notice the result. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard of these things. Uh, this is in the early church, the very early time. And uh, God causes them death in order to give them a case example to the Christian community of the fact that you do not uh, have to lie. You should never lie to the Lord. Now, the next example is the Lord's uh, Supper or communion. In 1 Corinthians 11, let a man examine himself, and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup, for he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, it says, many among you are weak and sick, a number sleep, a figure of they bought the farm or they made the final deposit, or they are dead. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are what? Disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. So the communion, the Lord's Supper, uh, whatever uh, we name it in within our, our spiritual community, this is a very sacred sacrament that you are not to abuse or misuse. And if people do, as they were in that day, with many abuses and uh, lying, uh, God is going to, again, do a case example. And the discipline is that some will be uh, caused uh, sickness, disease, and others who are 
uh, extremely uh, blasphemous in this context, will die. But notice it's we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned. There are times when God says, child, I'm bringing you home because of your sinfulness. In 1 Corinthians 5, uh, Paul says, for I'm on my part, on my part, although uh, I am absent in body, but present in spirit, I have judged him who has committed this uh, sin as though I were present. Now, uh, there's a debate and discussion whether this is the man who had uh, was living and had sexual relations with his stepmother or his father's wife. I think there can be a good connection there. But if you don't make the connection, it, it doesn't matter. He says, whatever his sinful actions are, he says, in the name of our Lord Jesus, when you are assembled, I, with you in spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus, I have decided to deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh so that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Uh, this is a believer. This is a sinful believer, a publicly sinful, disgraceful believer. And Paul says, by the leading of the Lord, he is going to die at the hands of Satan, the holder of death, and I will deliver his spirit. This is not only a statement of uh, judgment, but also of the security of a believer. That yes, God takes Christians from earth at times because of their public blasphemous testimony, but in regards to that, they are still saved. And then the Hebrews chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. It says, it is for discipline. And we always think of discipline usually as some kind of harsh punishment. The Greek word also has the concept of training, hard training. It is for discipline that you endure. God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? But if you are without discipline, of which all have become partakers. Every believer is trained and disciplined by God. But he says, if you have no God discipline in your life, no God training, then you are illegitimate children. The old King James, you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we had earthly fathers to discipline us and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be subject to the father of spirits and live. For they disciplined us for a short time as seemed best to them, but he disciplines us for our good so that we may share his holiness. And now the importance of this last statement. All discipline for the moment seems not to be joyful. That's almost like a sarcastic, sardonic understatement but sorrowful, yet to those who have been trained by it afterwards, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. God does all these things because he loves us. He does all these things because he is training us to righteousness. Why does God cause disobedient Christians to die rather than repent? Case examples for others. A way of bringing Christ-likeness and the full will of God into your life.